Cynthia, it's Dr. Beard from here with the rest of the team. We're just getting started on your left shoulder. We're looking in from the back to the front. You're laying on your side, and everything that you see is magnified 30 or 40 times on the screen. So with you laying on your side, your arm is at the top of the screen, so the ball part of the ball and socket joints at the top of the screen. Your biceps tendon's right here, and it inserts down into the labrum down below right here. Um, can you get me a, a high five seat here? And um, so now we're going to just go through systematically and evaluate the anatomy. So we first look at the biceps. We know that you had some chronic biceps tendonitis, and so we're planning on doing a tenodesis today. Right next to that, we can see a little bit of fraying in the undersurface of the rotator cuff right here. And, uh, but that's just a partial, a partial injury. We'll go ahead and put a shaver on it. to make sure, pause, okay, so here we are shaving this partial tear, take a, a stitch and pass it across this tear, kind of as a marker stitch, also is what we call a rip stop stitch. But there you can see, you can see this area of the cuff. Okay, now we're going to look down at the biceps, anchor, we can see some tearing and we can see how it pulls away a little bit. Some of that's normal, but again, you've got that chronic biceps problem outside the joint, so we're going to be releasing the biceps. The next step for us is to take a spinal needle and then a shuttle relay, and we'll show you what that looks like. But first you'll see the spinal needle coming right through the biceps tendon. There it is coming right through part of the tendon there. And then through that spinal needle we'll pass a black wire called the super shuttle. The super shuttle will come down, and you'll see it come into the joint right there. Now I need a grasper. And then we'll go ahead and grab the relay here. Back the needle out, grab it. Okay. And then we'll go ahead and load the uh, super shuttle here. Pause. Okay, so here you can see we're pulling back on the relay and it's going to bring that white suture through. The next step is to take the spinal needle again and the relay and the grasper again. Here we're just going to try and pass through in a slightly different area of the biceps. It doesn't have to be very far away at all. Really it can be right next to it because what you'll see in a second is that this loop is going to go right around the tendon and not just directly through it. So now we'll take the grasper again and we'll grab the relay just to hold it still. The reason we don't pull the, the uh, wire is because if you pull the wire directly, the sharp edge of the needle will fray the wire. So we hold the wire still and then pull the needle out. Now the trick here is not to pull straight out. We want to reach around behind the biceps to get the relay here. So now I'll come around behind the biceps, grab it like that, and the reason we do this will be evident in just a minute. see how this white stitch is going to come and create a loop around the bicep. See how that goes around instead of just through. 
And so the reason we do that is it's a much stronger way to secure the tendon. So now we've got a stitch going all the way, a stitch going all the way around the back, going out through the top of the shoulder. Now we're going to go ahead and take a pair of arthroscopic scissors and cut the bicep at its insertion. And now we know that biceps won't cause any more problems. Now, before we do anything to the rotator cuff, we're going to look around the rest of the joint. Pumps off. And um, let me take the camera. So now we're going to look towards the back of your shoulder and show you some interesting things that we've already seen. One is that you've got this area in the humeral head that looks like it's from an old dislocation because this, when you have that type of injury in the back of the ball, see here's the whole ball. When you have that type of injury in the back of the ball, we call that a hill sax lesion. And so that looks like an old, an old hill sax lesion there, nothing new. We'll look at, we'll look at the posterior capsule, it looks fine. As we look down at the posterior labrum, it looks fine. And furthermore, your shoulder is not unstable under exam, but, but we sure see some evidence of some old instability in the past. Okay, and so now we're going to look down the front of the shoulder. Hold this shaker, please. And as we rotate up here and look down the front, there's a couple things. This edge right here is part of the subscapularis tendon. It's part of the rotator cuff in the front of your shoulder, and it's a little bit frayed, but we know that your strength was good in the office, and this isn't near enough of an injury to have to repair. Okay. And so now, hold the shaver again, please. So now as we look down the front, we can see the anterior labrum small, but it's there, so we're not going to do anything else to that. So now we're going to look at the rotator cuff, that area that was a little bit frayed. We're going to take our spinal needle, just like we did for the biceps. We're going to first pass right about there, okay? And now we'll pass the same black wire, the same super shuttle, and we'll use the same grasper in just a minute. So here's the wire coming through, super shuttle. We'll grab the hold still, then we'll back the needle out. Take the needle. And now we'll go ahead and load that wire with a stitch. Okay, that's step one, and now we'll take the spinal needle again. And this time we'll come in from lateral at an angle. Grab the wire. Cool. So we're basically doing a medial to lateral repair here. Trying to bring this little frayed area back down towards the uh, tuberosity. So as we pull tight seal, that's going to function as what we call a rip stop stitch. Okay, to prevent that from propagating. When those tears get bigger, they tend to extend immediately. So the 
inside the joint and get to work in the subacromial space. Okay, so we're just finishing up here. I just wanted to show you what we've done and what we've been looking at. Mitsum and Egypt here. So as we look towards the front of the shoulder, we can look up, we can see the cut edge of the bone. And that looks nice and smooth. That's our decompression. Okay, hold the camera, or hold the shape, please. As we look down at the anterior portion of the rotator cuff, you can see there's our stitch. That's our ripstop stitch that was through the rotator cuff tendon. That looks good. The rest of the rotator cuff is what's rotating here as I rotate your shoulder. And I don't see any other defects in the tendon. That all looks good. Your bicep sutures would be way up here to the left. There's a white suture. It's kind of hard to see because some of the tissues are. The suture tails are right down in the middle of the screen right there. You just see the cut edge. So the biceps is secured. As you look here towards the back of the shoulder, the back of the rotator cuff also looks good. And I don't see anything else to do. So we're going to finish up here and get you back to the recovery room shortly. Good luck to you now. Bye-bye.